Hi friends, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Jay and today we're gonna to be talking about cast iron. I love using cast iron in the kitchen and honestly what I use it for the most is in the oven. You obviously can cook with it on the stove and I do sometimes, but I love that this entire pan can just be put right into the oven. Buttermilk biscuits, cinnamon rolls, chicken pot pies, the opportunities are absolutely endless. I also like it because it's very reminiscent of a time when you were in the kitchen, you were focused on what you're doing, you didn't have a million distractions, you didn't have your phone going off, the TV on, it was quiet and you were able to really focus on what you were doing and that's kind of what I look for when I'm in the kitchen and using cast iron for me is just kind of that added element that takes me back to a different time. So today we're gonna to be talking about cleaning your cast iron, um, seasoning your cast iron and maintaining your cast iron so that it can be something that you use for years and years and could even pass on for generations to come. I obviously have a lot of cast iron. This isn't even all of it. These are just my pans. I also have griddles, um, cornbread um, molds. I have a ton of cast iron. So we're gonna use this pan today. I was irresponsible and I made something in this pan and then I didn't clean it and I just kind of tucked it away. So hopefully you can see there are some dried on food bits here, even a little bit of rust right here. So I'm going to go over how to clean your cast iron. This is not a video on how to restore your cast iron. That takes a little bit more elbow grease. I do have a pan that could use that as well. It's actually this one. This guy needs a little bit of elbow grease. I'm not, I'm not doing that today. So perhaps I'll make a, a restorative cast iron video in the future. Today we're just cleaning, seasoning, and maintaining. So in terms of things that you need for this, it's funny because there are so many options out there, it's crazy. So you need a little bit of aluminum foil, that's standard. And then in terms of cleaning your cast iron, you don't want to use soap. Cast iron is very porous and that's what makes it so great, but it's also tough because you have to be careful how you handle it. If you use soap, it can seep into the pores of the pan. So if you have cast iron that you're restoring and it's in really rough shape and you, you don't know where it's been, you don't know what's you know what film is on top there, then yeah, you should probably clean it with some soap uh, just that one time. But then once you season it and you kind of lock those pores in, you don't want to do it again. And we're not gonna use it today with this because this pan is not in that desperate of a condition. We're going to use my scrub daddy. You can use um, a scrub brush, steel wool,
side as well. And you see how it turns kind of black? That's getting that last layer of seasoning that I did off, as well as all those nasty bits of food that we don't want. Also, I'm just gonna go ahead and call out how janky my <laughs> tripod setup is. I have it balancing in between my um, faucet and the water purifier faucet that's right here. It's like hanging on between the two of them. Someday, I'll have a really nice top-down tripod setup, but today is not that day, my friends. All right, so my poor scrub daddy. This guy is out the door, last legs here. So all those nasty food bits from before are gone. We've got a nice smooth inside of the pan here and we are ready to start seasoning. Okay, now using paper towels, um, a, a good dry hand towel, whatever you have, you want to remove all the moisture from your pan. Make sure it is good and dry. The handle, the sides, the bottom the heat ring. I mean, I get into the emblem here. I want this to be dry as a bone. Rust. That's what moisture on cast iron leads to. If you don't feel confident in your own drying abilities, you can certainly put this on the stove and um, just on low and let the heat remove all the moisture if that's what you prefer. Now, at this point in the process, I want you to go ahead and preheat your oven as high as it'll go. 500 degrees is what they say. Some people's ovens don't go that high. So as high as you can get your oven, go ahead and preheat it now. Before it gets really hot, don't forget to put down your layer of aluminum foil. You need to do that before your oven's 500 degrees. <laughs> you really shouldn't even need the aluminum foil if you do this the way that I'm telling you to do it, but it's nice to have just in case. Okay, so your next step is the oil. Let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. So I've been seasoning cast iron for years and years and years, and I've always just used what I had on hand. I've used vegetable oil, I've used olive oil, I've used Crisco, I've used just regular butter. There are so many options. Um, I watched a couple of cast iron seasoning YouTube videos to see what all the cool kids were doing these days, and I'm seeing a lot of flaxseed oil. I did a little research and I discovered that I agree. I think that flaxseed oil is a really good option for this and I'll tell you why. But we're actually looking for a chemical reaction here called polymerization. And that is when you put the oil that you're going to use to season your pan, you put it into the oven on the 500 degrees and when you have reached or surpassed your oil's smoke point, Polymerization occurs, which bonds the oil to your pan. And that's what creates the, that layer of seasoning that gives you that nice, glossy, nonstick finish to your pan. Um, flaxseed oil has a very low smoke point, somewhere around the 220 to 230 degrees, which means it takes that many degrees of heat for your oil to hit its smoke point and polymerize into that layer of seasoning that you're trying to create. So using olive oil and using vegetable oil and using Crisco, that's all fine. It just takes a higher heat point to hit that and that's, that's okay, it'll still do it. The only thing that I really wanna caution you is if you use Crisco, that's considered lard and that's, that's fine. I actually really like that idea. I feel like that's very reminiscent of what they would have done previously back in older times, so I, I love that. You just have to be careful because lard will go rancid a lot quicker than something like flaxseed oil. All oils can go rancid. You know, you saw that big huge stack of cast iron pans that I have. I'm not going to use all of those even this year. So if I were to use Crisco, it's certainly going to go rancid before I get to it. So flaxseed oil, great choice. I'd say my number two choice would be olive oil followed by vegetable oil. Um, you know, so we're going to use flaxseed oil today. Here's what you want to do.
gorgeous. Oh, that is gorgeous. Let's see if I can look at how nice and smooth. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, another paper towel, a clean one. You want to go in along your pan and remove all the excess oil. You want to act like you're taking off all the oil you just put on. Get off as much of it as you can. And if you do a good job of this, the aluminum foil you put in your oven, you're not even really going to need it, but again, just why not? Such a small thing to save you such a big mess. Once your oven has reached 500 degrees or 450 or however high you were able to get your oven, you're going to take this and put it face down on whatever rack is available in your oven and you are going to leave it in there for an hour. Once it has been in there for an hour, take it out. Obviously you're going to need to use something to, to get it because it's going to be very hot. Set it right side up and just let it cool. Let it completely cool down or at least to where you can touch it. And then we will revisit this, okay? Okay, and we are back. This was in the oven at 500 degrees for one hour. It's still a little warm, but I'm impatient, so we are moving along. Now you're just gonna repeat those last two steps again. You're going to put in some more of your oil of choice. Use your fingers or a paper towel to spread it around. All right, then you're going to take a dry paper towel and you are going to wipe off the excess again, just like last time. All right, and it is ready to go back in the oven again for another hour at 500 degrees. Upside down, just like this. Okay, friends, this is out of the oven and it has cooled down quite a bit. It's still a little hot, I guess. Um, I recommend doing this a third time. I mean, you can do this three times, four times, five times, as many times as you want. The more you do it, the more you're going to build up that layer of seasoning and it's going to become nice. It's going to be like a mirror. You're going to be able to see your freaking reflection. It's going to be so nice. I'm going to stop it too because I've seasoned this before. It wasn't in bad shape. It doesn't need to be done that many times. So I've done it twice. Please do it three, you know, however many times you want to do. Um, the last thing I am going to do, um, and this is kind of optional, this is fine. You can go ahead and store this the way it is. I'm going to put one more just real light layer of the oil on the inside here just to really drive it home. Don't have to. This is my first time using flaxseed oil. I have to say I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not going to lie. This looks beautiful. This looks nice and smooth. I'm really happy with how it turned out. that that is beautiful gorgeous you crack an egg in this and it is just going to slide around so easily this is so pretty gosh I just love cast iron there is just something so special about it to me I absolutely love cooking with it so a quick recap for you we cleaned it using scrub daddy link in the description no soap then we dried it thoroughly we put a really hefty layer of our flaxseed oil and then all over, all over the, the inside, the outside, the side, the logos, the handle, we covered it with oil. We wiped off the excess. We put it in the oven for 500 degrees, as high as your oven goes for an hour. We took it out. Oh, and by the way, it was upside down in the oven. We took it out. We let it cool. We did it again as many times as you want to get this as nice and smooth as you want. And I put one more layer just for extra protection and that's it. I mean, it's really quite easy. Now, in terms of maintaining your cast iron, so you've seasoned it, it's beautiful, it's perfect. You wanna cook dinner in it tonight, that's fine. You go ahead and do that. And then all you have to do, just a little bit of water in the sink with whatever sponge or brush you have that you use to clean your dishes no soap you go in and you just scrub off the bits of cooked food immediately dry it and then put a thin layer of your oil 
in your pan, very, very thin layer, wipe off the excess, and it's ready to go. It's ready to store, that's it. That's all you have to do to keep up with your cast iron. Every now and then, if you use it really frequently and you're kind of, you're seeing that you're losing that non-stick patina, you can go through the seasoning process again, do this again. I usually do it for my pans. Um, the ones, my favorite pans that I use a lot, I'll do it every six months. The ones that I don't use a lot, I will definitely at least season them once a year just to keep them looking really nice. In terms of storing your cast iron, there is one more important thing that you need to know. You, If you have a lot of cast iron like I do, this big old stack of it over here, if you notice, you do need to put like a paper towel or a hand towel or something in between them just so they don't react with each other. You don't want them to get kind of sticky or gross or whatever. Um, so always separate them with a paper towel and that will keep them nice and safe and dry and away from each other. I wanted to go over this with you as kind of an introduction because you're going to start seeing a lot of cast iron recipes from me. I've got quite the lineup of recipes to show you that can be cooked in cast iron. They don't have to be cooked in cast iron, but it's how I'm going to do it. And if you want to start trying your hand at it, or if you already cook with cast iron, I just wanted to make sure you had all the tools to be as successful with it as you could be. I'm going to actually do a whole series on it, and I'm going to create its own playlist on my YouTube channel so that you can find them all um, happy, cohesive, and organized in one place. So here we go, starting out how to season, how to maintain your cast iron so that you can have optimal success with these recipes going forward. So thank you so much for dropping in. I hope that you learned a lot and uh, I, I really hope that I see some of you guys breaking out your cast iron. It's just, it's so good for the soul in my opinion. Using cast iron is just, it's tried and true. It's been around longer than your grandparents, longer than your great grandparents. And it's just, to me, it's incredible. So please give it a shot. Thank you so much for dropping in. If you like this video, please subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.